There you go. I was going to say, is he turning around? <laughs> Back here. Is he, is he in there? Is he in there? He's in there. Back here at Country Radio Seminar having a fantastic day. It's just day one. Two more exclusive days coming up over the next couple of days at the Omni Hotel presented by our friends over at Bangtail Whiskey, uh, Gentle Bend Spirits in Honky Tonk, Texas. And pleased to welcome in. It's just Monday. We're just getting started here. Uh, give us a like out there, too, and powered by the sportsguyspodcast.com. We go back a little bit, but they're together again, and it's kind of, I'm glad it's the revival. Big ride in the ride joining here us here. Are. All right. Thanks, thanks, Bye. Bye. Terry, what's up, man? Man, it's good to be here. It's good, it's good to see you again. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. Well, we, <laughs> well, we're supposed to do something a while back. Come see you. We'll mess you. I can't we'll wait to see we'll you guys. We'll figure it out. We'll we're, figure we're, it out. we got a lot of dates coming up, we got, so we'll, we'll make one work. I look forward to it. Well, tell me about this because uh, the reunion, okay, good country music. We all know what the 90s was about. You guys were in there too. Brooks and Dunn, Restless Heart, Shenandoah, and just some of the great bands out there of all time. The reunion getting back together. This has to be exciting for all three of you too, and and congratulations. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it it is exciting. It is. It's exciting to see some response, exciting to get back on the road, go to the studio together. It's all that stuff that we used to do, you know, 30 years ago. And uh, still we're, still, we're still able to do it, uh, you know, pretty well. And so we have we haven't taken that long of a break. We've all been playing music. <laughs> yeah, since we, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Since we and we stopped doing it as a band the first time. We got back together in 2002. Made a record called Amarillo Sky. It was awesome. It was fun. Unfortunately, back then there wasn't all the outlets to get it out there. Like there is now, 20 years later. So we just did a five song EP and released a couple songs recently that are doing well. Here we yeah. are. Yeah. We're excited to be here. So. You know, everywhere I go in the city, it's so magical talking to so many people and so much talent is in this thing called Music City. I love it so yeah. much. And the cool thing is that those songs back in the 90s, One More Crying and Sacred Ground <laughs> and uh, Can I Count on You, right. Still Songs, Series X in Prime Country. I've played in those vinyl records that I have. Well, what's vinyl? <laughs> yeah. I got vinyl. Yeah. No doubt, but how cool is it to see even those, song, those songs stand the test of time even now? Isn't that great? We're out there playing them again, and people are singing along. You know, we see it all yeah. the time, including the new ones. So we've got new ones coming out. <laughs> that we're trying to use that same format to satisfy fans now. So. We just played a 90s festival down in Key West for four days. And just all those acts we used to tour with, you know, back in the day. And then seeing people come out and supporting that all these years later, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a good time for us. We didn't plan it necessarily we just sort of it evolved and turned into what it is now everybody's at a place in their life where we can you know put some time in towards this and uh, it takes that you know to find good songs write good songs record and then uh, to head out on the road it's uh but we're still enjoying it that's the biggest part of it having a lot of fun and hitting the road tomorrow we're flying to fargo north dakota and going up to minnesota and iowa we got four shows this week and uh yeah, it's good. We spent a lot. Oh, oh, I was going to say Manoma, Minnesota, and uh, Jefferson, Iowa, and Cedar yep. Rapids. Anybody that's in those areas. Yeah, we'd love to see you. Love to see you. We've been down in your state quite often. Oh, yeah. so I was going to yeah. ask where <laughs> that. Can't where wait. is the barbecue? Come on, All right, man. Bring barbecue it. for me has got to be best spot for me. Is we were talking about this last last year, maybe before. Austin, Texas, has got some of the best up there. Yeah. Round Rock area is pretty yeah. good. San Antonio, Kerrville. Taylor, so Taylor, Lano, it's Lano. Cooper's. When was the place Cooper's. you took us to? That was in Taylor, Mueller's. Okay. Yeah, Mueller's. Mueller's. Yep. That's a great one, an old, old school, but really cool. Yeah, it's everywhere down there, but yeah. a lot of good a lot of good food. Just to eat. I will say New Braunfels down there. Yeah. When you guys will play around that area. Yeah, Cooper, yeah. She mentioned that was one of the, the best ones I've tried as far as getting there. Slice it right in front of you. Yeah. Oh, Put yeah. Put a them out on your plate yeah, and yeah, have a yeah. good time with that, too. Oh, so it's yeah. a... But you get enough to get the Texas barbecue. That's a, a, a tradition. Yes, down there. And I, well, I, I have to brag. I have a restaurant in Scottsdale that's got great ribs. Barbecue. <laughs> Matter of fact, our barbecue sauce is getting bottled. So y'all really? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I got some news for you. I'm going to be in Scottsdale in two oh, weeks. Well, you, you got to come check it out. Little, what's, what's the that's same it. of the place? That's it, right. the Hamilton right. Bar J. Yeah. There you go. So I'll be in Scottsdale in like two weeks. Oh, watch you'll, it. You'll dig it. I'll dig Hamilton Bar J. That's a hard It's great. I'm going. It's hard job, Jared. I'm going to play golf, watch baseball. Oh, yeah. It's a spring training. Perfect. Do you have a. We have, uh, well, we're going to see the Rangers down there yeah. and the Padres. I think we're going to see the Mariners play a little bit, too. So yeah. a couple of games, and then we'll go over to Chase Field. Um, it's one of the last games before the regular season starts. The Diamondbacks are playing 
Cleveland Guardians, or about to say that. But uh, Red Shakespeare. Just out yeah. the, the other day, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm a Scottsdale Charo philanthropy group in, in Scottsdale. And uh, part of my job as a Charo is to work the games. We, you know, volunteer to help and sell programs and 50 50 raffles. So I've worked two games last week and it was absolutely gorgeous out there. Yeah. It's so yeah. beautiful yeah. here. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Well, like the Texas weather coming from it, so I was like 86 and I get out to 46 yeah. when I flew in. Saturday, yes. was, yeah. ooh, man, Nashville, Shocking, yeah, uh, spring time, it turned in the corner from winter, and I'm going, this is yeah, hot. It's yeah. been crazy. <laughs> Tennessee, Texas, yeah. Tennessee springtime, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's 80 beautiful. degrees in Phoenix right now. So really. Well, I can't wait to try the restaurant. It's going to be fun. Yeah, 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 cool. You know, we had Exile on this morning, yeah. 60 years in the Isn't business, incredible? 45 yeah. years for just so many great hits and, and things like that. And all uh, the same guys. You all over, which was a big oh, song yeah. for them. Yeah. 45th anniversary of that song. Um, yeah. We always talk about staying the test of time. You guys have done that each as a group, each as a solo artist. Talk about you know, what new advice would you give the young artists today who are pursuing music in this town, want to get their name out, and what's the key to consistency? Well, I mean, finding a way to stand out in the crowd is probably the toughest part of it. You know, I mean, having something unique. And when we got together, I was still living in Texas, so. I was cutting all my demos down there when I got to Nashville. Didn't sound exactly like everything that was being cut here by the same guys who cut a lot of it. So it made my music stand out a little bit. It actually helped me and was beneficial, especially for Tony Brown, who was the big producer at the time when he heard it. But I think that's something you know, being genuine and authentic. We talked about that all this morning. That's the toughest part of it, you know, not just going with the trends and sounding like someone else. And then the dedication it takes to, you know get good at your craft whatever it is song if you're a songwriter if you're the you know the musician guitar player guy whatever it is i mean it's a dedication to getting good this town is built on a lot of great players and songwriters they they're just a good song doesn't really work here it's uh, it's got to be something pretty special but and like you've said you've seen so many people since you've been coming up here it's tempting for young people to see that and go, I want to be that person. And there's already one of those people, you know? So it's kind of hard to do. You've got to, you've got to find a way to get your foot in the door, but be yourself in the long process. So. It's, it's such an authentic type thing. You know, we talked about that in the past. I also want to get an update for, from you because I remember last time we talked, you put together a solo record. Yeah, yeah. You know, we talked maybe a couple of years ago. You're right. or somewhere there. Yeah. How's that doing? And, and I know you, you work with a lot of great people on your solo record. Oh, it was great. B Billy sang on the record with me a little bit. I had yeah. done a couple of songs and Wendy Moten. I had Delbert McClinton. I sang the title track, uh, Rebels and Angels with Patty Loveless. The song I wrote with Chris Stapleton and uh, yeah, we had a good run with it. You know, it was during COVID, there was no touring, so we decided to release the record and at least have something to try and talk about. And that really kind of led me towards running into Ray. I invited Ray to come out and see me in Scottsdale. I was doing solo singer-songwriter tours. I played a beautiful theater out there called the Musical Instrument Museum. And Ray came out. I got him up that night. We sang Sing the Ground together. And we caught Billy with man. This could still be fun, you know. I mean, it's just like we're kind of picking up where we left off, and so that really got the ball rolling by me just being involved in that project, getting out of touring a little bit. But uh, yeah, and, and then here we are, with our own music now, a couple years later, and uh, we hit the yeah. road, and it's been pretty fun, man. Speaking of sacred ground, we always talk about the special songs to stand the test of time, and I know we talked about this in previous shows. Uh, a song when it was written. Did you feel like did you kind of just know you had something special with that too? I, yeah, one, that, one that comes to mind was one that he wrote and brought to Ray and I on the road called Just One Night. When he brought it, Ray and I looked at each other and my gosh, man. Yeah, this was, is, it just was so natural for us. I was still a little insecure about writing and just sharing my music. You know, I mean, I've been writing the first album with some great songwriters in Texas took me in. That's a song I wrote on my own and I sent it to someone at the label, sent it to someone at our company and then it got shared quickly and then they called back and said, man, we're going to have to cut this on the next record. I hadn't even played it for Billy or Ray yet. So I said, hey man, we might want to, let's listen to this song and let me know what you think. So we worked it up in the hotel that day. I don't tour with the Judds back then. And we went down and played it that night and we got a standing ovation from it. And that's when you really know you've got something, a song that's never been heard by the audience, but you get that immediate response. So that was pretty exciting for 
defense. I wanted to ask you all about, I mean, it seems like we lose great legends every day in the oh, yeah. industry. Uh, but recently I saw and ran into uh, a good friend of the show and a good friend of, of myself. Love Crystal Gale. Love oh, watching yeah. her perform. Oh, uh, big she, on her yes. on <laughs> she came to Beaumont for a little show there at Jefferson Theater, which is a little theater there for a long time. Uh, um, the loss of Loretta Lynn and the impact yeah. of that on country music. Talk about a little bit about just uh, what she meant to it. Great ambassador, living legend, oh, yeah. and, and definitely missed every day. Oh, just the voice that was on the radio my entire life growing up. You know, I mean, if you're a country music fan, uh, it was just, you know, she was just such a big part of whether it was her and Merle Haggard, Conway Twitty, everybody else that we put our teeth on, you know, those young guys. And, you know, they, they were authentic stylists. Yeah. You know, and her, 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 her exactly. Girl, like, a lot like Dolly Parton, writing what she knew growing then, up. Yeah, and her life through music like that is pretty impressive. And as we know, for a woman, yeah, yeah, man, oh not man, easy. I just I have to say I just hope that the younger you know we get asked by a lot of uh, the people here at the CRS what we would say to young people. I would say you know listen to those classics. Yeah, go back Don't go just go back to like 1990. I mean, you got to go back to the 60s and 70s and, and prior, but, you know, those artists like Merle Haggard and Loretta Lynn, Buck Owens, George Jones, I mean, there are some young really, artists. Johnny, do, oh, are, really, Johnny. Yeah. Just, just go back and listen to that. Yeah, we've, and always, we've always done that. Even when we were younger, we were always searching for music, whether it was new or old. You were always trying to hear. Back then, everybody was playing records, you know, and you hear something you'd never heard before. It's pretty exciting, you know. And, even today, it's like yeah, I'm still. I mean, I'm still moving forward, still writing with younger artists, and working with younger artists, and it's interesting. There's still some cool, talented kids out there trying to make it. Uh, they won't all make it, but uh, you know, I've met a lot of them over the last gosh, 10, 15, 20 years now. And some you never hear from again, and others have gone on to do quite well. You know, I remember riding with Morgan Wall, and the first time I met him, he was like, "Man, he's a talented kid." He, really wrote well. He sang really good in the room. Chris Stapleton, I wrote with Chris 10 years before he ever even got discovered, and we all knew Chris was talented. It took him 10 years to really find an audience, you know, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. National especially, everybody comes through here, you know, and they don't all make it. I mean, Luke Bryan, he was such a big ride the right fan. He wanted to ride or be on. He was just a nice kid. It's like, I don't know this guy, you know, what's ever going to happen with these people, you know, but yeah, so nice learned all of our songs in college you know he's a great guy and i've met They're so many there. people through our music yeah who, along the way that they want to just get in the room and get right because they, they appreciate what we've done in the past i love it too this is kind of cool we'll end it on this note too and guys check out there's new music out from mcbride the ride right now tell us about new music we'll do a couple questions here but yeah the new music is out there right now impacting people already yeah it impact the charts terry it's exciting man we got a top 40 single of music road this week and that's you know, not easy to do. It's uh, the song is kind of doing a lot of it, and around Texas as well. We're on all the radio charts. We're not even promoting it down there, but it's just a great thing. It's kind of you know genuinely happening uh, organically, they like to say. But pretty cool to see stations playing that song, and, and we're excited. That's why we're here this week. We just got people who want to talk to us, like you, and we wanted to take the time and, and uh, get back in here and visit. Let everybody know what we're doing. But yeah, we're excited. The new music is a we've seen the reaction live that we haven't seen since the nineties. You know, Marlboro's and Avon. That song connects in a big way. People really like it and that makes us happy to, to see that reaction out of the road. I want to finish up with this one because I got to fill a bucket list dream for me last year. I was doing a high school game back home broadcasting football and then I look up and Clay Walker comes inside my booth, <laughs> sits down next to me and he grabs a headset puts it on. I'm doing play-by-play -play, trying to focus <laughs> on the game. And yet, my hometown boy, Beaumont, there, yeah. puts on a headset doing color commentary. You just need Mark Chestnut to come in next. <laughs> or, or Tracy Bird. Uh, yeah. You have the trifecta, the Beaumont <laughs> trifecta yeah. right there. But if, if you guys are putting on a headset and right, doing play-by-play -play <laughs> for a college or NFL team, what would, your broad, who would you like to broadcast? What NFL or college team would you Ooh. broadcast? Well, uh, that's a good question. I've never heard that one before. That's I've, a good one. I've, I'd like to be positive about the Titans. They're, they're, they're going through some stuff some right stuff, now, as yeah. we all know. Um, man, oh man, uh, goodness sake. 
Yeah, what artist? Uh, I mean, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Well, Titans would be a good choice. Hey, I, I always wanted George Strait cut, so I'd have George on the headphones <laughs> just so I could pitch him a new song. In yeah. between, uh, you know, during the uh, commercial break. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> I've been fortunate to have a couple George cuts, so I, but he's always been a hero growing up in Texas. You know, he's one of those guys that he's still, he's still one of the heroes for sure. No doubt. We love Texas. We love you guys. Love that it's, I mean, top 40 now. Marlboro's and Avon doing so well. Cannot wait to see you guys out on the road, get to a show, do some coverage Yo, out there for on. us at the uh, backstage pass. The Legends, McBride and the Ride. More coming up here from CRS 2023 Live, the Omni Hotel, uh, presented by our friends at Banktail Whiskey, Honky Tonk, Texas. And Gentle Ben Spirits, the Legends, McBride and the Ride, back on the road. Check them out. we got more to come here. Stay tuned.